For over 45 years, people have relied on Village Green Apothecary to give them individualized nutrition, pharmacy, and healthy living products. Village Green will give you the kind of person-to-person help and attention that mass market pharmacies have long ago forgotten. You can depend on us for knowledge, experience, product selection, and a smile. Visit Village Green in Bethesda at 5415 West Cedar Lane. Call us at 301-530-0800 or check out our website at myvillagegreen.com. We're here to help you. Welcome, listeners, to the Essentials of Healthy Living on 1500 AM. We're brought to you by the Village Green Apothecary, located at 5415 West Cedar Lane in Bethesda, Maryland. I'm Dana Lake, and I alternate the show with Dr. Kevin Passaro, and we both try to bring you a lot of good information all about you and your health. Now, the show is streamed through myvillagegreen.com. That's myvillagegreen.com. This is a reminder that Village Green is your resource for questions about your health, whether you go on the website or visit the store on Cedar Lane. They carry superior supplements from many manufacturers, including their own Pathway products. Now, we're here every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., so please join us next week for Kevin's discussion with Dr. Gerard Mullen on the Gut Balance Revolution. Now, today's guest is Amber Veets. She's an educator for Garden of Life, who is, and she is a certified nutritionist in integrative nutrition with expertise in Ayurvedic medicine. We're going to discuss the emerging research in probiotics and the microbiome. Welcome again to the show, Amber. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be back, Dana. It's great to uh, be here with you. Yes, you always have interesting information to share. And as we were talking prior to the show, the information on the microbiome has expanded exponentially in the last decade. And it seems to be rolling even faster, more and more research. Uh, can you just give a quick overview for our listeners? Uh, we don't. Some of the listeners are familiar with the topic, but some may not be. Exactly. I, I'm I'm on a mission to make the word microbiome a household term. <laughs> you know, I think Good. that we've had such a an anathema, you know, such a, a hesitation and a disgust towards microbes little beings in and on our bodies over the last century or more, really, in the 1800s. And so we really on a mission to reacquaint people with the microbes that live in them and what they do for them. And I guess I should define microbes. Um, I really try to start out that way. Um, for the most part, when we're talking about microbes in and on our bodies, we're referring usually to the fungal and bacterial kingdom, mostly even bacterial and all of the activities that they do. So what the research has shown over the last decade, because of the advances in genome sequencing, um, which we thought was going to tell us a lot about our human DNA, but really tells us a lot more about other organisms that live on and in us, all that research has just exploded. It's really exploded, and it's fascinating. It's fascinating. It really is. Uh, So we're talking about the bugs and uh, I know that we we talk a lot about this, and I repeat it, and most people do, that we're 10-part human, 10% human and 90% bug. And when I say that to my patients, they can't comprehend it. Can you expand mm-hmm. on that? <laughs> I have a really weird way to visualize it, but I'll, I'll throw it to you. Um, it's a UFO came in and with a laser beam zapped you as you're walking down the sidewalk into a puddle of goo and landed and they got out and the alien archaeologists uh, were to swab that goo and take it aboard the alien ship and analyze the DNA. What they would find is by genetic diversity, that puddle of goo that was you is more than 99% microbial DNA wow. and less than 1% human DNA. So, it's so by even... <laughs> genetic diversity, we're less than 1% human. It just happens that they kind of govern who we are and what we do, and our human cells are so much bigger. And so that, that tends to, you know, determine how we look and predominantly how we perceive ourselves. But we have, yeah, on average, 10 times more microbial cells than human cells. Isn't it fascinating? Uh, I think that was was hard for most people to gather because, as you mentioned, uh, really in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 
uh, 70s, it was thought that we had all we had to do was kill a bunch of bugs. Actually, started mm-hmm. in the 30s with the uh, beginning of penicillin, the discovery mm-hmm. of penicillin. We no longer had to help the body help itself. All we had to do is wipe out all the bugs, and all of them were considered bad. So uh, Exactly. <laughs> and I think that everything starts out with good intentions. I like to think back into the 1800s, the first pioneers with a microscope, and seeing in their tears, in their saliva, in their teeth scraping, these little beings wiggling around and how... You know, for scientists, it's fascinating, right? I mean, you and I probably, too, were like, oh, that is clinically interesting. But for the average person, it's shocking, shocking to find that there are living things on you, and you don't know if they're good or bad. And, you know, Pasteur and all of these pioneers in in microbiology started out with a great idea. Wow, you know, there are these things that might determine our health or disease. But then we started an all-out war, assuming that they all might be bad and that they all might be harming us. And that's kind of where we've gone wrong. It, it absolutely is. And I think back always to Semmelweis and have to give a nod to him. Uh, he was driven out of medicine and died in an institution because he had this <laughs> odd idea that washing, when doctors washed their hands between performing autopsies and delivering babies, there was lack of or less childbirth fever. And he didn't know what it was, but it was something he said that couldn't be seen. It was Mm -hmm. before Pasteur's time, and uh, I think we still uh, experience the Semmelweis effect in doubting findings (laughs) before we really look at them. So uh, just... Absolutely. It's so hard to imagine not doing that today, isn't it? Like, who would ever consider, like, touching a carcass of anything and then preparing food or touching somebody who's ill, you know, or who needs your help? It just, it's mind-boggling today to even think that that was not considered at that time. But, yes, people have been driven out of medicine for all kinds of great discovery. Yeah, and the pendulum swings, and here we are, you know, we've started out with penicillin going against microbes, and now we're saying, wait a minute, these are our friends. So, Amber, uh, can you talk about sort of the global issues with the microbiome and how important it is and the kinds of species? It seems to me every time we talk about this, uh, we know more and more species more and more about their impact on human health. Absolutely. Um, You know, the Earth Microbiome Project is one that compares, um, you know, microbial communities around the world. Like, what what do we look like in and on our bodies compared to someone in, you know, South America or in South Africa? Or how how do they compare? What's common to all humans and what differs based upon where you live and what you eat and what you interact with? And then the Human Microbiome Project initiated in 2008, and that has really spawned an explosion of, of hundreds, maybe thousands of studies, very, very minute uh, or into the minutia of a particular strain and global studies like meta-analyses of, of various discoveries. Um, and this is what is bringing us, if anyone's interested, going to the NIH site for the Human Microbiome Project really opens up a, a rabbit hole of information in this area where we've discovered that, you know, it's not even just about the genus and the species of a particular microbe, it's also about the strain. So things that we're familiar with, like Lactobacillus acidophilus, Bifidobacterium brevae, underneath that genus and species classification, there's strains, and different strains may differ. They may perform certain functions better. They may be better for certain situations. The prevalence of a diversity of strains may be indicative of a greater health or the lack of more indicative of a tendency toward disease. And so without genome sequencing, we would never have been able to figure this out because it was dependent upon us being able to culture bacteria, you know, in a Petri dish, for example, and look at them under a microscope. And now with genome sequencing, we can differentiate through that scientific process, which has become, you know, a bit like a fax machine, you know, it's become that sort of mundane, I think. Um, And and so this allows us to really, uh, I think there are 3,000 reference strains now um, as a database, and then as they discover something new, that gets reclassified. So they're looking really all over the world. Um, The Human Food Project is great 
to follow, and American gut is great to follow as we discover other species and strains that are in the guts and on the bodies of people who live lives that are much more indigenous to humankind, you know, people who are living the way that we've lived for thousands and maybe millions of years and how they differ and how many more strains they have than the average person living in the United States on a standard American diet, having several rounds of antibiotics every single year of their life. You know, this is more than fascinating. It's like a mystery uh, as we delve through this. And, and I am impressed with the, the brilliance, the intelligence of the microbes in our body, how they can so easily be damaged, but how they try to right themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, can you speak to that a little bit? Well, you know, it's interesting, and I'm going to bring in Ayurveda here, because Good. Ayurvedic medicine is thousands of years old. And, you know, you give anybody a lot of time sitting on a rock observing something, it's amazing what we humans can come up with. And that is really what Ayurvedic medicine was, insight, intuition, observation over a long period. And they understood that there were little things inside of us. They understood the concept of atoms. They understood the concept of some kind of a germ, a microorganism that was inside of us that governed certain things. And they understood how to prevent disease through herbal medicines um, to keep things in balance. And they understood the concept of cellular intelligence, our human cells and other living cells in, in this universe in which we live. And so that, that's really it. We, our human cells have a native intelligence, a design, a direction, in which they are supposed to go when they're functioning optimally. And the same is true for microbial cells. It's just that what we now know is that they interact, they communicate. Microbial cells in our gut actually activate neurotransmitters from our own human cells, which talk to our brains. Microbes actually make signaling molecules. They actually convert our human hormones into other molecules for certain functions. They're constantly a part of that message and that interaction. And they're really, what was fascinating, the most fascinating thing for me was finding out that what we think and how we feel can actually be determined by the microbes and what they're releasing inside of us, which is in turn determined by what they're feeding on which is determined by what our diet is. So we go back to you are what you eat in a much more in-depth than we ever realized because what we're eating is feeding the microbes and driving them either in a positive, healthy direction or a negative direction. Absolutely. And I love to bring it back to that uh, documentary, Super Size Me. Remember that a lot of people yes. that in the 90s? Because that was really, in the 90s, we were looking at, oh, it's poisonous food. You know, he ate McDonald's three times a day. He wouldn't eat anything else. He went from a vegan diet, very full of fresh vegetables and fibers and everything, to McDonald's. And he got very sick. And all of his biomarkers declined as well. You know, his blood tests, his urine tests, all of his you know, everything that they looked at in conventional medicine was really failing in him over the period of a month. But we now know, if we were to put that side by side with what we now know about the microbiome, what we would be seeing is that he was starving the microbes that would have done beneficial things for his body and feeding the ones that could care less about you, that have a totally different agenda in the body, He's providing them with refined flours and sugars and chemicals and they are creating havoc in his body. And that is what caused his health to fail. That is what initiated these disease processes in him was a lack of regulatory microbial community regulating each of the different microbiota of his body. Very well put. And we are going to carry this conversation on uh, in this direction and, and many other directions. And for those of you who have just tuned in, you're with the Essentials of Healthy Living on 1500 AM, brought to you by Village Green Apothecary. Stay with us. We will be right back after this break with more interesting information from Amber Lynn Veets.
Solgar Number no. 7 can help you feel the difference. Solgar Number no. 7 actually shows improvement in joint comfort within seven days. Now you can start to get back on track fast and pursue the activities you love. Solgar Number no. 7 is a breakthrough in joint care with no glucosamine and no chondroitin. The advanced bioactives in Solgar Number no. 7 help to increase flexibility, mobility, and range of motion within seven days. One capsule once a day is all you need. When stiff joints occasionally say no, Solgar Number no. 7 says yes. Solgar number seven, available at Village Green Apothecary. New from Garden of Life, Kind Organics Whole Food Multivitamins. They are the only USDA certified organic, non-GMO verified whole food multivitamins available. They're gluten-free, certified vegan, and feature a patent-pending clean tablet technology. Kind Organics is super clean, untreated, unadulterated, and real whole food. Kind Organics Multivitamins from Garden of Life. Be kind to your body and the earth. Kind Organics, now now available at Village Green Apothecary and online at myvillagegreen.com. Are you under a lot of stress at work? Pressure from the boss, budget cuts, impossible workloads? It can all take a serious toll on your health, but we can help. Village Green Apothecary has everything you need for a healthier lifestyle. A wide range of nutritional supplements, health-related books, and more. We've been providing customized nutrition and healthy living resources for over 45 years, and we'll take the time to advise you about your unique needs. Visit Village Green Apothecary in Bethesda at 5415 West Cedar Lane or check out our website at myvillagegreen.com. Staying mentally sharp means nourishing the mind as well as the body. That's why there's new Cognisure from Metagenics. Research shows that the active natural ingredient in Cognisure supports multiple mechanisms necessary for maintaining healthy cognition and a healthy brain as it ages. Cognisure is also easy to take in delicious, chewable chocolate tablets. Have a clear and bright future by maintaining mental capacity with healthy habits and Cognisure. Remember Cognisure for healthy brain aging support. Available through your healthcare care professional professional and Village Green Apothecary. Do you have unique needs that a mass market pharmacy can't handle? Village Green Apothecary can help. Maybe your doctor prescribed a special compounded formula for you, or you have concerns about allergies or dietary supplements. We invite you to talk with one of our compounding specialists today. Our team includes pharmacists, nutritionists, clinical herbalists, and naturopaths offering customized products and personalized healthy living plans to ensure your well-being. Visit Village Green in Bethesda at 5415 West Cedar Lane. Call us at 301 530 or check out our website at myvillagegreen.com. Welcome back, listeners, to the second segment of The Essentials of Healthy Living on 1500 AM. The show is brought to you by Village Green Apothecary at 5415 West Cedar Lane in Bethesda, Maryland. I'm Dana Lake, and I alternate the show with Dr. Kevin Passaro. We're here every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And please join us next week for Kevin's discussion with Dr. Gerard Mullen on the gut balance revolution. And speaking of the gut balance, today's uh, guest is Amber Lynn Veets. She's an educator for Garden of Life, and she's certified. She's a certified nutritionist in integrative nutrition, and she has expertise in Ayurvedic medicine. We've been talking about emerging research in probiotics and the microbiome, and I think you gave a nice definition in the uh, first segment. Can you talk a little bit more about the categories that we use to describe the microbiome? Okay, so microbiome itself means the microbes, that, for the most part, fungi and bacteria that live on and in, uh, when we're talking about human microbiome, our human body, and the genetic material they contain, the genetic information that they contain. So it's our microbes, your individual microbes as Dana, my individual microbes as Amber, and that is our individual human microbiome. Now, a plant has a microbiome also. You know, a, a basal plant has a different microbiome than a tomato plant. They invite different microbes, different fungi, different protozoa around their root systems, perform different functions for their flourishing. And then an animal, your dog, has a different microbiome. And if you live with your dog, your microbiomes might start to become very similar, as a matter of fact. So people you live with might have similar microbiomes as you do. And then within microbiomes, you want to identify the different species. And so just to revisit high school biology, um, as I remember it, and I think it's changed a little bit, there are six kingdoms, and the four we work in the most are animal, plant, bacterial, and fungal. So those are the ones we're most familiar with. And then below that, 
if you remember the acronym, King Philip came over for good soup, right? Kingdom, phylum, uh, class, order, family, genus, species. So genus, species, if we're talking about microbes, you might think lactobacillus acidophilus, lactobacillus genus, species acidophilus. Um, and so um, phylum, which is just below kingdom, is a very big classification that when we're talking about the bacterial kingdom and different phyla in the bacterial kingdom, each phylum would have very broad array of different bacteria in it, you know, a whole bunch of different names of bacteria. So that, that kind of breaks it down. But when I talk about species and strains, to say that we have thousands in and on our bodies gives you the idea that lactobacillus acidophilus as a supplement is only one of thousands of possibilities. Right. So that's that really hones it in. Uh, and we're talking very specifically. How many uh, species in the human microbiome have do we now think exist? Because I know this number changes. It seems like it changes every day. If you're following it like I am, I feel like, you know, every time I put up a number, it changes. <laughs> yes. You know, I, 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 like I said, I think that the Human Microbiome Project has a reference database of 3,000 species um, that they have a genome sequencing for. That doesn't mean that they're not still discovering something that seems to have a different genetic fingerprint. Uh-huh. Um, and so when we talk about the average human I mean, anybody who's, whose system is knocked out by rampant antibiotic use, for example, and poor diet could have, you know, they could be running around with 500 different species. Uh, somebody who has tremendous exposure to an indigenous lifestyle, to dirt, to plants, to animals, to untreated water, and no medications in their life, no antibiotics, might have, you know, 3,000 in some species. And what we're trying to determine is if that diversity is truly linked to health or disease. And, and it seems to be globally, but not absolutely. Well, I think it's fascinating. Uh, I also enjoy the fact that uh, the tests that we use clinically are now identifying the species and showing uh, that an individual may have very few species compared to a spectrum that includes indigenous cultures. So my understanding is that we are at 25% of or even worse number, uh, the number of species that we should be having. And that's pretty shocking. Yes, in, in the United States, in, in um, conventional societies that have access to modern processed food and medication, yes, that, that seems to be the case. And, and how did we come to this? Dana, I mean, we've, we've, what's happening is that we're running out of antibiotics to treat disease. Right. And so we have superbugs in hospitals. Everybody's heard about this. We've heard about methicillin resistant staph infection. We've heard about Clostridium difficile C. diff infections that there's no treatment for. People die every day of sepsis in the hospital when microbes have overtaken their body and, and antibiotic treatment switching from one to another to another doesn't cut it anymore. And this is scary. This is scary, and what it turns out is that we have the answer within us, and we always have, as usual, um, if we are able to rebuild the native intelligence of the microbial community in our bodies, then they kind of just take care of things. But it can be a big, long journey rebuilding that microbial community. And that's what's really fascinating about what the Human Microbiome Project is doing now is not just what are the individual species, but how do they work together? What is, the, what is the genetic material of a community of different species? Very fascinating. Um, what, let's translate this to tips for our listeners. I always like to go into the background and educate, and you're an educator for Garden of Life, and maybe mm -hmm. you can talk to us a little bit more about what do we do right now? Right, exactly. So let's make another definition. I think it's always important to define what probiotic is. And probiotic refers to actually a single-celled organism, usually a bacteria or a yeast, a bacteria or a fungus, that 
uh, is for life, probiotic, pro-life, and it, it helps to keep us living in an optimum way. And so when we supplement a probiotic, we are putting microbes in our body that support healthy living, that we have identified as being associated with living healthily and with a lack of or absence of disease. And so those are very important. If, 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 if a person has been exposed to all the wonderful medications that modern living has to offer and all of the chlorine and fluoride-treated water that our societies offer us and all of the processed food and lack of fresh air and lack of exercise that we have ample access to, it's quite likely that your probiotics in your body are pretty depleted. And so it is important to supplement them. Well, how throughout history would we have supplemented them? Well, if we were hunter-gatherers, every time you take an animal's life and for your family, to feed your family, and you open it and you clean it out, you're interacting with the microbes of that animal. And you know that, you know, indigenous cultures, us as humans, ancestrally, we did not have hand sanitizer. We did not have soap. You know, we just kind of wipe our hands on our on our legs and go on. And we ate a lot of food barely cooked and partly raw. And so we had a constant interaction with a wide diversity of microbes that we learned to um, have homeostasis with, to have symbiosis. You know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. I do something for you, you do something for me. We had that relationship with our microbes. And even as we became uh, farmers, agrarians, domesticating livestock and agriculture, we always cultured food. If you milk anything, a camel, a water buffalo, a yak, you have to culture it. You have to ferment it and keep a culture of good bacteria in there so that it tastes good and it doesn't hurt you and keep the bad bacteria out. So we've always had cultured food that's spawned out into cultured vegetables, kimchi, natto, sauerkraut, various things throughout history and cultures all over the world. Well, you know what? In the United States and other modern societies, we have refrigerators now, and we don't have to do that anymore. So we don't get these good probiotics back into our bodies. So if there's one thing that a person needs to supplement every single day of their life, if they aren't culturing and eating their own food, is a probiotic. And then there are the things that feed those microbes, and those are called prebiotics. They're not living single-celled organisms. It's fibers and starches that come from our food and our diet if we're eating a natural diet. And that's a whole other important aspect. That's right, because we go back to talking about feeding uh, the body, and we're not just feeding our body, we're feeding our microbes, and that's what the uh, prebiotics are. So I'm glad you brought that up, probiotic and prebiotic. Exactly, exactly. And, And what we find, some of the studies that really brought us to this point and really caused us to look further showed that Diet changes the phylum of bacteria that exist in your body predominantly, the ratios of certain kinds of of bacteria that live in your body. When your diet is rich in unrefined, unprocessed food and natural fibers from tubers and onions and leafy greens and things like that that feed good microbes that do good things for you, there's less association with inflammation, obesity, overweight, and chronic degenerative disease. But in cultures that don't include those natural foods, that eat a lot more processed, refined foods, high sugar diets, high chemical diets, it feeds a whole different phylum of microbes. And those microbes don't really care about fiber, and they don't create the same short-chain fatty acids and vitamins and other molecules that our bodies need. They're in there having a party. They're doing something else entirely. They're creating poisons, things that toxify our body further. And we keep feeding them and they keep asking for more sugar and they keep asking for more uh, refined flour products. And they actually tell your mind, eat cake, eat pasta, eat cookies. No, you don't want asparagus. You know, they're actually telling you what to eat and that is associated with inflammation, with obesity, overweight, with chronic degenerative diseases. Well, that is that is an excellent discussion of, of how our body drives us in the wrong way. And people ask all the time, why do I crave all the bad things? Why do I crave sugars? 
And this is a step further because the consumption of a high glycemic, high sugar raising uh, food diet is that it drives you to eat more rather than to eat less. But the drive really comes from the microbes and the imbalance that we're getting the wrong wrong type of bugs in our gut. So we're going to carry on this conversation. For those of you who have just tuned in, you're with the Essentials of Healthy Living on 1500 AM. We're brought to you by Village Green Apothecary. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. Mega Food Premium Whole Food Supplements are the only supplements crafted from scratch with farm fresh whole foods to deliver nourishment the way nature intended. Mega Food believes Mother Nature knows best. They select only fresh whole food, harvested at the peak of ripeness, handle it gently and with care to deliver its vital essence to you in every bottle. Mega Food, from farm to tablet. Our name is our promise. For more information, visit us online at megafood.com. Zymogen is pleased to announce the arrival of Fit Food, a delicious, high quality, functional food that's formulated to support weight management, healthy body composition, glycemic management, cardiovascular and immune health, and more. Each delicious serving of Fit Food contains 21 grams of pure New Zealand sourced bioactive whey protein, 6 grams of fiber immune supporting oat beta glucan, and additional glutamine, glycine, taurine, and MCTs. Fit Food provides holistic support for today's active body. Learn more at Zymogen.com. Available now through your healthcare professional and Village Green Apothecary. All over the world, people are beginning to discover fish oil is one of the best secrets for unlocking great health. Thousands of studies have shown the amazing effects of these powerful omega-3s for heart health. Plus, fish oils have even been shown to balance moods and lessen anxiety. With exceptional taste, unrivaled freshness, and unsurpassed Past purity. Nordic Naturals is the easy way to get your omega 3s every day. To learn more, visit Village Green Apothecary or visit NordicNaturals.com. Nordic Naturals, committed to the planet committed to pure and great tasting omega oils. The brain requires nutrition just like the rest of the body and this is where Gero Formula's Neuro Optimizer comes to the rescue. Neuro Optimizer is a concentrated source of nutrients needed for memory, mood, concentration and focus. Neuro Optimizer supplies the building blocks for neurotransmitters, the chemicals that allow cells in the brain to communicate and to file away memories. Neuro Optimizer is the nutritional answer to the brain's needs. To learn more about formulas, visit Gero.com. Gero Formulas, available at Village Green Apothecary. Did you know at Village Green, we offer everyday savings on top quality nutritional supplements, including herbs and homeopathic remedies, plus personal care products and more. That's right. In addition to our other big sales events, you can save up to 20% on most everything you need for a healthier lifestyle today and every day. At Village Green, we've been providing customized nutrition and healthy living products for over 45 years. Visit Village Green Apothecary in Bethesda at 5415 West Cedar Lane or check out our website at myvillagegreen.com. Welcome back, listeners, to the third segment of The Essentials of Healthy Living on 1500 AM, brought to you by the Village Green Apothecary at 5415 West Cedar Lane in Bethesda, Maryland. I'm Dana Lake, and I alternate the show with Kevin Passaro, trying to bring you a lot of good information all about you and your health. We do this every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., so please join us next week for Kevin's discussion with Dr. Gerard Mullen on the Gut Balance Revolution. And we're talking about that today with Amber Lynn Veets, an educator for Garden of Life, who is a certified nutritionist in integrative medicine with expertise in Ayurvedic medicine. And we've been having an interesting conversation about the human microbiome. We talk about being 10-part human and and 90 part bug uh and that is true we depend on them these are the good guys uh amber gave us a, a great description of the breakdown the kingdom the file of the class all the way down to species and that we know now there are about 3000 that have been sequenced in this human microbiome project uh one of the questions that i have of amber is i've been a practitioner for 50 years and in the 
early days, that makes that's such an old sounding term. In the early days, we used freeze dried, and the count was, was thousands or millions, but we got results. And then I had a patient who had yeast overgrowth, candida, who misunderstood my instructions and took 10, either two or three times a day. It was, it was huge, and it, it sort of made me gasp when she called me. And she said, it's wonderful. My candida is resolved. My symptoms have gone. And it was an aha moment. Now I look at the need that we have for such high counts because we're not getting uh, naturally fermented foods. I don't know if we did more 50 years ago than we do now, but I suspect that our guts are just worse. And so, Amber, I'm asking you, how did we get results back then uh, with such really inferior products uh, and we need such superior products now? Can you address that? Absolutely. I, I, I think, I mean, I think you, you said it's absolutely true that um, just like with homeopathy, just like with, um, you know, heavy metal alchemy coming out of Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine, you know, these are things that used to be curative for people when our bodies were able to listen better. But there are so many reasons why subtle therapy is too background. It's too much in the background. It's not screaming loud enough to overcome the state of unhealth that many of us are living in now. I, I, you know, the 70s was really an era when um, our, our food supply just changed dramatically. And then what happened in 1996, the first genetically modified crop was made um, available and usable. And so things have shifted dramatically in that time. We have now, because of genetically modified crops, way more... Uh, chemicals in the herbicide department being sprayed on our food, and those chemicals are proven to interact with our microbiome and, our, and, and the microbes and the DNA in our guts. And so we are exposed to so much more, and where in a lot of people, a little bit seemed to help a lot, um, the problems seem much bigger. Now, microbes are all, they should be in a quality product, dormant, asleep. They have been made in very cold conditions. They are in a dry, cold state, dryness being the most important factor because it turns out in the right packaging, the same strains can be stable on a shelf as long as they are dry, dry, Colorado mountain air dry. You know, it's, it's when they get moist that they get active and they need to eat and they will consume any prebiotics in there and then eventually, you know, turn on each other and then they'll be defunct and that'll be it. So your probiotics can't get wet in a food, a cultured food. There's tons of substrate there for them to eat on and live and flourish. And so you, know, you make a yogurt, you don't make it in the fridge, you make it out on the counter, you know, it's at room temperature and it's supposed to be moist and it's fully alive. It never gets freeze dried or, or put into a dormant state. In a capsule, it has to be stable. It has to be dormant, and when it gets warm and moist in your body, whether it's a powder or in a capsule, then it starts to come back into a living state again and consume some prebiotics and produce some short-chain fatty acids and, and may hopefully make you some vitamins and some other things. And so now we, we do seem to have to hit it with a lot higher dose, and like the story you were telling me, Somebody who was struggling from candida, which is just probably one of the most difficult things to deal with, you know, in, in a clinical setting. It's such a terrible, boring diet. It takes forever. You know, it requires a lot of, of therapeutics. And it's maddening. It's maddening. But the idea is to outnumber the offensive organism with good organisms. But sometimes the gut isn't a very good home anymore for those good organisms. And so it takes time to alter the environment. And it seems now the more we pour in, the more microbes you pour in, even if they don't all stay, they perform a function. They release um, substances, short-chain fatty acids especially, especially like butyrate is a fuel for our intestinal epithelial cells. It's their energy molecule. And when they get it, those intestinal epithelial cells perform their function better. They absorb nutrients better. They 
reproduce themselves. They create an integral gut lining. They put proteins on the surface to allow certain things through and block other things. And so their whole functioning improves when they get the food they need. And they can't eat. Our intestinal epithelial cells can't eat fiber. It's not for them. Fibers from really good vegetables and a few of your, you know, small intense fruits and root vegetables are, are, are food for the microbes so that they can produce things that feed our intestinal epithelial cells. That whole relationship is fascinating to me. So I, I actually had somebody in a store tell me, maybe they'll hear this and be happy I called out, um, giving a person just probiotics, it serves a transitory function, but it's like me handing you a plant. Just a bare plant, no, just a bare root system, no pot, no soil. That is me giving you a probiotic. And you can eat it or you can walk around with it for a while or you can take it home and plant it in your garden or in a pot and then it might flourish. But if I give you a plant, which is a probiotic, with a pot and soil, which is prebiotics to feed it, then you can take that plant home and if you water it, you can nourish it and it might grow and you might have it for years. And so that's giving you a, a supplement that's probiotic and prebiotic combined. But if I give you a bag of really good compost or fertilizer for your garden or for that plant, then you're really growing it. Then you're really flourishing it. So feeding the microbiome properly, whether it's through prebiotic supplements or through foods that are well designated as being rich in prebiotic fibers and and digestion-resistant starches, Um, then you're really growing a garden. Then you're really organic composting. Then you're really doing this biodynamic farming in your body and you have the possibility of reversing health problems by growing a, a, a beneficial community in your gut. So really what we need people to take is the plant, the soil, the pot, and a bag of fertilizer. Yes, that's a, what a good metaphor. That is a superior metaphor. Um, I'm, you know, I'm reflecting on patience and this whole idea of the fact that the microbiome makes en- enzymes. It generates the production of enzymes, neurotransmitters, immune factors, et cetera, et cetera. And as long as our gut is inadequate, we will struggle. And I think of all the diets, as, as you may know, I've, I've written a book on diets. And I see those diets as like wearing a cast until the arm heals. That's my metaphor for the diets, that if you can't, ta- if you've got SCD diet, GAPS, gluten-free, casein-free, soy-free, phenol-free, low oxalate, et cetera, those are needed because the body is not handling what is consumed. It's lacking certain enzymes and certain efficiencies within the cell and lacking enzymes in the gut. And once that's restored, the diet shouldn't be needed. Now, of course, we don't see that happen across the board, but we do see it happen. And I think it comes to the point that what's more important is getting the gut right. Uh, and I'm also reflecting, we've talked about uh, fecal transplants, where a person gets a transplant of uh, fecal material from a healthy donor, usually a healthy two-year-old who has never had antibiotics, is the best source, a family person, and how so quickly that person's health turns around. That is a fascinating topic, and it's, I, it seems like I'm always talking about that at a dinner training. You know, we start talking about food, people, you know, people's noses wrinkle up, but it, if you're very ill with a C. diff infection, even with they're looking at, you know, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's, colitis, um, they're looking at, at diabetes and autoimmune disease, MMS, autism, all of these areas where fecal microbial transplants are being used now. If people can get past the ooh factor, and if you're desperate, you will, they're seeing tremendous results. And one of the most amazing things is um, in in the Netherlands, uh, Dr. Newdorp is doing research on type 2 diabetes and transplanting fecal material from lean, non-diabetic donors into people with type 2 diabetes 
and seeing an improvement in their insulin sensitivity and a reversal of the symptoms and the markers of type 2 diabetes. Now, that, to me, is fascinating. It is. And, you know, this was born uh, from alternative, complementary, non-traditional medicine. But the the medical community (laughs) grabbed it because the results were so dramatic and i think that uh, that research and those findings along with our ability to identify dna in the microbiome sort of collided together and was the big bang that turned things around with regard to what we know about the microbiome so what we'll do is continue this discussion and talk about in the next segment some interesting probiotics that can affect different conditions and may differ for male and females. If you've just tuned in, folks, you're with the Essentials of Healthy Living. I'm Dana Lake, your host for the hour, and we're brought to you by Village Green Apothecary. Please stay with us. We'll be right back after this break with more interesting information on the gut microbiome with Amber Lynn Veets. Solgar No. 7 can help you feel the difference. Solgar No. 7 actually shows improvement in joint comfort within seven days. Now you can start to get back on track fast and pursue the activities you love. Solgar No. 7 is a breakthrough in joint care with no glucosamine and no chondroitin. The advanced bioactives in Solgar No. 7 help to increase flexibility, mobility, and range of motion within seven days. One capsule once a day is all you need. When stiff joints occasionally say no, Solgar No. 7 says yes. Solgar No. 7, available at Village Green Apothecary. If you have arthritis, everyday tasks can become a challenge. That's why more and more doctors are recommending Arthrobin, an all-natural medical food for the dietary management of osteoarthritis. It contains a combination of bioflavonoids, which work to reduce inflammation and joint deterioration, along with collagen peptides, which increase joint mobility, function, and repair. Arthrobin is not a drug and is virtually free of negative side effects. Look for Arthrobin by Designs for Health Today, available at Village Green Apothecary and online at myvillagegreen.com. New from Garden of Life, Kind Organics Multivitamins. That's right, certified organic, made with the highest quality standards, uncooked, untreated, unadulterated, non-GMO certified, vegan, and gluten-free. Kind Organics Multivitamins from Garden of Life. Be kind to your body and the earth. Kind Organics. Now available at Village Green Apothecary and online at myvillagegreen.com. Some things are hard to stomach, and life doesn't stop for occasional immune challenges or intestinal distress. ProBalarti from Metagenics offers a new targeted probiotic approach for intestinal support. Help maintain control while traveling or as a follow-up to antibiotic therapy to support intestinal flora for healthy intestinal function. ProBalarti provides ID-certified probiotic strains suggested by research to enhance certain aspects of immune function in addition to promoting a healthy balance of intestinal microflora. ProBalarti is the go-to probiotic for patients on the go. Get it today. Available through your healthcare professional and Village Green apothecary. Have you ever wondered why the cold and flu season occurs in the fall and winter months? One theory is because of a decrease in sun exposure, our bodies don't make enough vitamin D, which is essential to proper immune function. That's why medical experts recommend supplementing with vitamin D. Thorne Research's vitamin D products are made from pure vitamin D with no preservatives or unnecessary ingredients added. Support your immune system with Thorne's vitamin D1000 and D5000. These and other immune-supporting formulas are always available at Village Green. Welcome back, listeners, to today's final segment of the Essentials of Healthy Living on 1500 AM, brought to you by Village Green Apothecary at 5415 West Cedar Lane in Bethesda, Maryland. I'm Dana Lake, and I alternate the show with Dr. Kevin Passaro. We are here every Sunday morning at 10 AM. Now, today, we've been talking with Amber Lynn Veets, an educator for Garden of Life, who is a certified nutritionist in integrative nutrition with expertise in Ayurvedic medicine, we have learned a lot about our topic, emerging research in probiotics and the human microbiome. So, Amber, can you summarize a little of what we talked about? And then let's talk about uh, 
sort of supplementing a healthy diet that includes fermented foods with probiotics that may be a little bit more specific. All right, absolutely. Well, I, you know, the point here and what is so fascinating and so easy to geek out on is that we have in research found so many specific strains of species of microbes and particular functions that certain of them perform better than others. And that gets us into this excited scientific realm of, oh, if I just get that lactobacillus helveticus, that's going to fix my anxiety. You know, that's going to fix my cortisol levels. If I just get a hold of that, I'll be fine. And and I am not reductionist, and I can tell you aren't either. You know, we come from a realm of holistic health, meaning we look at things from all angles, even from conventional medical angles, if need be. We look at things holistically in their whole parts. And so, even with microbes, we can't break it down to one strain is going to fix all your problems. They all work together in our bodies, and they perform functions symbiotically together. They support each other. It's like you can't just put nitrogen on a plant and have that produce everything that that plant needs to grow and be a plant that supports you. Nitrogen is not the only thing that happens there. And the same is true in our gut. You can't just offer one microbe. But that being said, all of this research and genome sequencing has given us the ability to determine numerous safe strains that we can supplement that do have an effect in clinical research, big studies, breakthrough studies showing that you know, Lactobacillus helveticus and Bifidobacterium longum together alter people's perceptions of their life, that their stress-induced anxiety and depression actually improves from a, uh, a, a, a subjective perspective. But in addition, that in biomarkers, their urinary free cortisol actually reduces by 13.5%. That's huge. That tells us that these two strains have an ability to break down cortisol. And the body, that's crazy. That's just wild, you know. And so when you start to look at that in a supplement for mood, like we have in the new doctor formulated probiotics, that's just amazing. Something that doesn't hurt you, something that doesn't have a side effect that's negative but can actually affect your mood in a positive way. And we've identified those strains. But you have to come up from from underneath and support it with more strains, more diversity to build the entire microbiome. And Feed it. Either you've got to supplement prebiotic fibers like I was talking about or you have to eat right. But a lot of us don't feel like eating right when we feel ill, when we're when our health is so far down the bad track. We just want comfort food. We want starches and, and sugars and refined foods because the microbes that are in us want that. So this is where probiotics and prebiotics together help us get a leg up on eating healthier. So we put prebiotic supplements in with probiotic supplements at the same time to change the kind of microbes that exist in our bodies and the messages they send our brains. We know that lactobacillus ruteri and lactobacillus rhamnosus together, especially in clinical research in women, help to maintain vaginal floral balance so that we don't go out of whack into realms of yeast infection or bacterial vaginosis, things that cause discomfort and predispose women to other disease states in their reproductive systems. Um, We know that lactobacillus fermentum is great in studies in respiratory function, especially people who overtrain and overstress their immune system. They actually benefit from supplementation of lactobacillus fermentum. We know that lactobacillus gasseri, which is in our kids' formulation, has been shown in clinical studies on children to improve symptoms of allergy and asthma and to improve pulmonary function. It also has been shown to improve weight loss in adults who are obese and are on a weight loss program, as has lactobacillus rhamnosus. So a lot of these have over, you know, far-reaching, overlapping results, and this is why they all work together in a formulation. So a good probiotic has research strains, has diverse strains that might even be wild strains grown on foods, grown on dairy or vegetables, and has prebiotics in it to make sure that those microbes have something to grow on Um, until you can get them in your gut and feed them properly or change your diet or change your habits or change your stress levels. So all of that has to go together. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Um, And I'm also looking at some of the products uh, that 
we use from Garden of Life uh, that talk about ultimate care, those for women, colon care, mm-hmm. uh, gluten support, and males. <laughs> We've got yeah. the children, babies, infants. So there's a lot that's available. Uh, can you talk about the ultimate care? What's different about that one? Well, ultimate care is in a line called raw probiotics, and all of those products are based in 30 strains that come from kefir and yogurt. And so I call these wild or heritage species strains. You know, they're they're occurring naturally in foods, and then they're purified off those foods. And then the ultimate care has four additional researched strains that have been clinically researched and shown to be very potent and very useful when you're on antibiotic therapy or have been on long-term therapy or have kind of been really depleted by some kind of a a disease process or a lack of health. Ultimate Care and Five-Day Mass Care have the same strains. They're just different formulations as far as the prebiotics that are uh, present and the way that they're delivered. One's in a capsule, one's in a powder, and different CFU counts. And, and the raw probiotics are different from the new line of doctor formulated probiotics in that we needed something that was hypoallergenic, that was not grown on dairy, that didn't have a food base in it because so many of our customers or patients or clients have gotten to a point where their guts are so permeable that they're sensitive to everything. You know, they're sensitive to so many foods and sometimes we have to start with something that's much more um, purified and, and designated Work, you know, worked up in a different facility, so it's designated hypoallergenic, dairy-free, gluten-free, soy-free, and not on a food-rich base so that a person can heal their gut, get more gut integrity, stop this process of autoimmune attack on their own cells, and then be able to move into a diet that's more diverse and species that are more diverse in order to reestablish a flourishing garden in their, in their bodies. And that's really why Dr. Formulated Probiotics were developed based on all the emerging research over the last just three, four years, really. Well, that is such a good summary. I'm very appreciative of your information. And I know that you'll be back on and we have much to learn. Thank you for being with us, Amber. Dana, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. And I want to thank you listeners for joining us on the Essentials of Healthy Living here on 1500 AM. You can access this show or any of the previous shows through myvillagegreen.com. I also want to remind you that we're here every Sunday morning. And please join us next week for Kevin's discussion with Dr. Gerard Mullen on the Gut Balance Revolution. And this educational uh, experience that we've had today will certainly help as you listen and take that in and then listen to Kevin's next week. I think you'll enjoy that. And as our lives move forward, I'm reminded that every day is a new day, every minute a new minute, giving us many opportunities to make positive health-enhancing choices. So please remember... It's also not the number of breaths you take. It's the moments that take your breath away. This is Dana Lake and Village Green wishing each and every one of you good health and a breathtaking day. Did you know at Village Green, we offer everyday savings on top quality nutritional supplements, including herbs and homeopathic remedies, plus personal care products and more. That's right. In addition to our other big sales events, you can save up to 20% on most everything you need for a healthier lifestyle today and every day. At Village Green, we've been providing customized nutrition and healthy living products for over 45 years. Visit Village Green Apothecary in Bethesda at 5415 West Cedar Lane or check out our website at myvillagegreen.com.